So now I'm telling you the financial management and you know that. So now I'm telling you the financial management and you know that when financial management is just not providing you cash and managing the cash. It is something more than that. It is actually the fund needed for enterprise, but at the same time, it is also for the effective utilization of it. So financial management is rather acquiring, distributing and effectively utilizing funds, balancing of revenues, expenditure and accounting of the entire transaction for better control and evaluation. That is the most important thing for the financial administration. And you know, there are some components of financial administration because you know, the finance is rather a great uh, matter or rather big matter for any institution because the institution are dealing with the public money or rather the individual money and when you with the corporates or specifically with the libraries you are dealing with the public money and that's why you must have some kind of proper planning for it that is financial planning financial planning whenever you will be given some money or whenever you will be given some um, Fund. How you use that one for what purpose? You must have a clear schematic diagram of it, and obviously the forecasting. Forecasting that is also important thing that is for any kind of financial management because you know you do not know what is coming in the next year. But as because you are preparing the budget for the coming year, so you have to have some bit of foresight that is what are the different aspects you want to cover and what are the new things that may creep in and you have to um, challenge that one. And the realization of funds and revenues from where you will get that particular fund, whether the government agencies will be giving you that one, whether you have to acquire that fund from the NGOs, private agencies or donations like that and after you realize that funds and revenues that is where from which places you will get that one then you have that one the allocation of funds so you have to allocate that one for the libraries allocation of funds is like that fund uh, most of the cases you are getting the sources of fund in the libraries are specifically the um, public grants by the governments by the government agencies like UGC and state governments, they are giving the funds to the libraries, specifically for the public libraries, rural libraries, and all the three tiers of libraries like academic libraries and institutional libraries. And apart from that, if you get some fund from NGOs or the charities, or rather you can go for the resource mobilization by selling the activities, in-house activities of the library. And once you've got that one, you have to allocate that to each and every one. So each and every segment you, are, you have to allocate that one. As for example, for journals, you can allocate a fund. For books, you can allocate fund. For employees or rather the human resource, you can give some funds. So all these things are very important. And then the financial accounting, you have to deal with this one that is keeping the balance between the allocation as well as the utilization and obviously you will be having that one that is the financial control you must have the financial control without financial control you cannot go for any such thing that is a public money that can be misused like that so financial control should be there and financial auditing last one what was actually given to you and how you spent that one what is the residual amount you have to do submit that one and the uh, authoritative agency will validate it try to revalidate it or validate it after checking and all these things either you will be given the clean sheet or rather you have to be answerable so this is what the components of management and for effective financial management we have some guidelines you know these are actually the simplicity regularity and foresightness economy economy means if you can do one work with a limited fund with a greater result it is always desirable and flexibility financial management must be flexible enough because 
uh, if your job is important or if the particular program is important, if that particular activity is helpful for the community, you have to go for that one without rather considering the fines or like that. So there you can go for the reappropriation or like that. So this is what the flexibility is. Now, one aspect is budgeting. Budgeting is rather a kind of planning process where a specific period of time is rather taken and expenditure and revenue of that organization are accounted for. This is budget. Budget is rather a planned document. You know, the budget that is a planned document. You know, here I'm showing you budget is a planned document and a financial statement which provides detail of the proposed revenues and their utilization. And it's usually a particular year. So each and every year you have to prepare the budget for your library and where you have to say that one what amount will be required for running the library for the particular year or the next year and what are the different heads for which you require that one and then you will prepare a budget for that keeping the from that one that is farsightness what may come or what may not come or that is which particular services which particular services require and which particular services not required so you have to go for that one so next is uh, the budgetary method you know there are, we have some data budgetary methods so first one is the line item budget or incremental budget a second one is the program budget, then we have the performance budget, then we have the PPBS planning program budgeting system, and lastly we have the zero waste budgeting. Now regarding line item budget, so see here you see this line item budget, then you have the programming budget, then you have the performance budget, then you have the PPBS, and lastly you have the ZBB. So now you know. If you go for the line item budget, it is the most common type of budget, which divides items of expenditure line by line into bracket categories such as books and journals, salaries, allowances, like that. And is that usually this is a very traditional method. Okay. And second one is the programming budget. You know that one that was actually developed by the Hoover Commission report propounded that one in 1949. There are actually a statement of the agency that's the library object, you have to say. Then full consideration of the alternative ways, whether you have that one or not, alternative ways, and logical selection of the best based on effectiveness and efficiency. That is, first of all, you have to go for the agency itself, in this case, the library. So, objective, you go for the objective, that is what the library is going to do for the next year and then full consideration of the alternative ways what are the different other alternative ways or not all alternative ways or not you can resolve the issue by taking other norms or other procedures or not and then out of all those things or all those alternatives you are choosing that one one particular aspect you are choosing which is the best and efficient enough uh, that is uh, extended it is extended form of line item method and this method tries to answer the question what purpose the money is being spent and how resources have to be deployed for each program so if you break the heads if you break the heads of line item budgets one after another and if you think that each and every head is a program then you can answer it that is you can actually tell it the program budget as for example you can ask like that what is the purpose of money being spent and why these are called as a program so obviously that particular one can have the sub programs also you can go for it so third thing that is the PPBS where the, the planning programming budgeting system where the central which is the central performance budgeting system and also important part of this one this method combines the functions of planning activities programs and services and then translating them into tangible projects and finally presents the requirement budgetary terms that is important that is why first of all you have to go for the planning activities 
So you have to make a proper plan whether that particular activities are really important or not. They are the programs and the services translating them into tangible projects and according to budgetary terms. And the lastly, we are going for that one, the method developed by Peter Field uh, during early 1970s requires requires thorough knowledge of the organization out of time such one. Having much in common with PPPS, it's, it's, it's a legacy of PPPS, but opposite to historical budgeting, it's not line item budget. It emphasizes current activities. That is important one. It, it emphasizes current activities and the necessity to justify each part of the program every year. It assumes the budget is zero for each program until one convinces the appropriate authority, authority that the program is worthwhile and deserving support at a specified level. It doesn't allow for increment growth in budget. ZBB is an operating planning and budgeting process which requires each manager to justify his or his entire budget in detail from scratch. That is, it is not actually considered as what you did in earlier times or like that. It's just each and every year you are rather starting from zero and you are specifying your need. That is, yes, I require this one for this one. It's continuing, but I think there are the chances of greater development and I require more fund for it one. So that is and shifts the burden of to each manager to justify why he should spend all. This approach requires all activities to be identified, developed and decision packages and systematic evaluation of ranking of decision packages, preferably using a computer.